Hello and a virtual welcome to SOAS. My name is John Hitchman, I'm the Student Advice Service Manager. The Student Advice Service provide advice of all the non-academic issues you might need help with before you come to SOAS, including immigration, accommodation and finance. So today we're talking all about student finance and the funding you might be able to get for your SOAS programme, undergrad programme starting in September 2022. So first of all, we're going to have start with a bit of a quiz, a bit of a rhetorical one because it's just me here recording this. So I'll give you the answers, but the idea here is really to get you thinking about how much things cost, a little bit of budgeting and financial preparation before you come to university. So firstly, there's a textbook. How much does that cost? Well, if you buy it new, it's going to cost you £42. If you buy it secondhand on eBay, it's going to cost £8.99. So kind of obvious, but worth thinking about. You don't have to buy all your books new. Students have often used these books in the past and you can get them much cheaper online. So a packet of instant noodles. Hopefully you don't have to eat these all the time, but occasionally this is the kind of thing students may eat. And again, there's always going to be a variation in price. So if you go for the Asda Smart Price noodle, that's going to cost you 14p. But the more heavily branded super noodle going to cost you 59p. So on to some more student related costs or student specific costs at SOLA. So how much do you think a zone one and two travel card would cost though? That would be something a lot of our students would use to get into university. So it's £37 for a week or £142.10 for a month, but that's the standard adult rate. So actually, as a student at SOAS, um, you can get this travel for £25.80 per week or £99.10 per month. And that's because you get, can apply for a 30% off 18 plus Oyster card from Transport for London once you're enrolled and registered as a student at SOAS. So how about a pair of vans? Whoops, I pressed the button too quickly. But um, if you buy these in John Lewis, they're going to cost you £50. And interestingly, if you buy them from the vans website, they're actually going to be cheaper. So again, we're, we're always looking to shop around, get you the cheapest prices and really save money on the things that you can save money on. Some of your costs are fixed um, and one of the fixed costs is rent. So how much do you think halls will cost? So that's a picture of some halls that are very, very close to Soas, maybe a five minute walk away. But we have halls all available all over London and you know within the commuting distance of Soas. So there's a huge range there and it really depends um, how close do you want to live to the campus? But also, of course, what your budget is and the level of luxury that you want. You know, if you want something, if you have to live in amongst um, other students and that might be quite a nice experience, then you can start off with one of our cheaper halls for £150 a week. Um, so what sort of financial help can you get while you're studying at SOAS as an undergrad? So that's what we're going to be talking about, the, the kind of bulk of this talk. So we're going to go into detail about the tuition fee loan and then support that you could get to help you with your living costs and additional types of support that you may qualify for as a student, perhaps uh, students with disabilities or students who are parents who, who have other extra needs. There's other support student finance can offer. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the application process, how and when to apply, a little bit about the repayment of student loans and also some other tips at the end. So the tuition fee loan, um, the good news about studying at higher, in higher education in the UK, uh, if you qualify, is that you don't need to find the money for your fees up front. You can take out a loan from Student Finance England and the loan for your fees, tuition fee loan, that doesn't depend on your household income. So um, the fees for 22-2023 are going to be 9,250 and you can apply for a loan to cover that full cost and you can apply for a loan for each year of your programme and you should qualify for that each year. There, there are very, very specific reasons why you might not and we'll cover those later. But for most people, if you've never been to university before, you can qualify for a tuition fee loan for each year of your programme at SOAS. And then you only pay back that tuition fee loan or any other loans that you take once you've graduated and once you start earning a certain amount of money as well, which we'll cover in detail later on. OK, so click on to the next slide. 
So living cost support, so the maintenance loan um, for the academic year 2022-23. Um, now some of this is based on household income. So um, a proportion of this is, how, is based on parental income. So if you're under 25, your household income is the income of, the, of your parents. And the maximum loan you can get based on their income is up to £12,667 per academic year. And that's available to you if you live away from home. OK, now if you're maybe living in London and able to stay and carry on living with your parents, which is in a lot of ways a great thing because you can save a lot of money that way, then the amount of loan that you get is, is unsurprisingly a little bit less. So £8,171. Now, proportional, some of that amount, some of both of those amounts is based on household income. So if your parents' income is a little higher, you may get slightly less than those figures. And then there's additional support as well on top of the maintenance loan for these other living cost supports. So we have SOAS bursaries, which is a standard thing we've been offering at SOAS for some time. So for 2022-2023, we have the bursary, which is aimed at students from lower income households. So the SOAS bursary will provide £1,500 for each year of study, um, unless you're going on, a, on a, a year abroad, language year abroad, but every other year of study is covered. And that would be based on you receiving the maximum amount of that maintenance loan. So that means you have a household income of £25,000 or less. If you have a look at our, our web page, there you can find out a little bit more about the bursary. But to qualify for that, on when you start for your programme, you have to make sure that you've completed your means test and apply for student finance and it's all been agreed. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then if you find that you've accessed all the funding that you're entitled to, you've got your, your maintenance loan and maybe a bursary if you qualify for one, but you're still struggling a bit or you've budgeted for the year and you're finding that you're having problems, then we have um, some hardship funds at SOAS that are administered by my team. And these are the ones that are probably relevant, most relevant, are the Access to Learning Fund and a fund called the Additional Study Support Fund. And these are both aimed to help students just as a bit of a safety net, really, if you have any financial issues while you're studying. It's quite straightforward to apply for these. It's a very simple online form that you complete and provide some supporting documents. But hopefully you won't need to do that if you get all the funding you're entitled to. And then there's additional support, as I mentioned briefly, um, for students with a disability, there's something called Disabled Students Allowance, and we just, we, we love acronyms at university, so um, we refer to it as DSA. And DSA is a grant to help you meet the extra costs that you may have as a disabled student. So um, they just make studying, make it that you can study on a more equal basis with, with other students. And anything you receive from DSA doesn't have to be repaid. And the amount you get isn't based on household income. It's really based specifically on the amount of extra support you will need in place. And DSA can be used for a number of different things. So specialist equipment that you might need, like computer software perhaps to help you, or even one-to-one -one support, like studying skills, tutoring, or perhaps mentoring. Or maybe you have mobility issues and you need some help with travel costs. Um, and DSA can cover that sort of thing as well. And then even things like photocopying and printing, if you need those, and they're related to your, your disability or specific learning difference, um, DSA can help you with that. So um, the SOAS disability team will be able to provide you with more support about, about DSA, and you can find their details through our website. Now, um, perhaps you're a European student coming to study at SOAS, so you'll be aware that um, as the UK has left the European Union, the rules are a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to run through them briefly here. So if you're a European student and you have a status under the EU settlement scheme, then you can qualify for support from student finance. So to meet the requirements there, it's fairly, fairly complex, but essentially you have settled status. OK, if you have settled status and that's been granted before you start programmes and um, the key date for all of these qualifying factors with higher education is the 1st of September of the year that you start. So you're starting in September 2022. But if on the 1st of September you have settled status and you're ordinarily resident in England, so you live here 
and he'd been here for the three years prior to the 1st of September. And then if during that period um, you were here only for educational purposes, if prior to that you had three years um, residence or prior to that you were resident in Gibraltar, the EEA or Switzerland, then you will qualify for tuition fee loan and a maintenance loan. OK, so uh, as this is recording, you can you can read this back and just check the um, requirements there. But essentially, if you have social status and you meet those requirements, you can get the tuition fee loan and the maintenance loan in a similar way to a, a UK national student. Now, if you have pre settled status under the EU settlement scheme, the requirements are are, are similar. So you're an EU national on the 1st of September 2022. You have pre settled status by that date and you've been ordinarily resident in the UK, EEA, Switzerland or Gibraltar for the three year period leading up to the 1st of September 2022. And that residence was not wholly or mainly for the purpose of education. And if that's the case, then you should qualify for a tuition fee loan. OK, so again, please, please pause the slide and reread that because there's quite a lot of information there. And then finally, if you have pre-settled status under the EU settlement scheme and, and you're an EU or Swiss national with pre-settled status and you qualify for the tuition fee loan, as in the previous slide, and you're ordinarily resident in England on the 1st of September 2022, then you might also qualify for a maintenance loan if you um, or you're the relevant family member of a worker in the UK. So if it's based on your work, you'll need to show student finance that evidence that you are employed and your worker status will allow you to get a maintenance loan as well as a tuition fee loan. Likewise, if it's a family member, you need to provide evidence to your family member is employed. That could be things like P60s, pay slips, etc. OK, so moving on. Um, as I said at the start, there's generally everybody's going to qualify for student finance, but the only thing that might cause an issue is if you um, have studied higher education in the past. So if you've already got higher education qualification, that might be a problem. Or even if you've got previous years um, studying things like a BA, a BSc, perhaps an FDA foundation degree or an HND. But there's things that aren't going to affect your entitlement, which you, you may have studied. So your A-levels or foundation diploma or an access to HE diploma, GMBQs, ABC diplomas, any of those kind of um, further education qualifications are fine. But it's just degree level, previous degree level qualifications may impact your um, entitlement to funding. But there may actually be ways that you could get apply for funding, even if you do have some previous study as well. So you can uh, definitely look into that and, and I'll give you details. For, you can contact us for advice if you need advice about that after this presentation. So applying for student finance is really straightforward. You just apply online. There's there's a web link there. Unfortunately, it's not it's not an active link, so you're going to have to just Google that. But it's very simple to do. Um, you can register and then provide all your personal course information. You can find the course titles that we have. They're kind of generic titles you should get that from UCASP um, when when you've um, applied for your course, but you can also find them on the SOAS website. And it's very, very simple to confirm your identity. You just have to give SFE your UK passport number <coughs> and your parents um, or, or partner's national insurance number. So if you're over 25 and you're cohabiting or living like you're married, you will need to provide evidence of your partner's income. But yeah, just providing the NI number to um, student finance is all you need to do normally. So it's very, very straightforward um, to provide that sort of detail and confirm your income and your identity. And applications for student finance normally open around about February or March. So look out for those, but you can have a look at the website now. Just keep checking back until it's open. So what about repayment of, of student loans? Well, you become eligible to repay the loan in the April after you, you leave or graduate from university. And so before then, you don't have to think about repaying it. And, and the good news is that repayments are automatically taken from your salary. 
with with your tax. So essentially, it's it's a sort of deducted thing that will come out of your your pay slip before you, before you see it. You don't have to arrange to pay it directly to student finance or the or the student loans company. And so essentially, it's added on like another tax. And you don't start repaying anything until you're earning over twenty seven thousand two hundred ninety four pounds per year. Okay, and then. Um, that's it in a monthly amount that's two thousand two hundred and seventy four pounds per month but you do need to keep repaying it if you work overseas and and you know from experience so students because of the regions that we study they do like to often go and work overseas so it is important that if you're going to be doing that after your degree you stay in contact with student finance you let them know where you're going and confirm your earning details to them and then you pay nine percent of anything over 27,294 that you earn. So the repayments are never going to be really, really difficult to afford. So that to give you an idea is the sort of amount that you'll be paying. So once you hit that threshold, then if you're earning, for instance, 29,500, you'd be paying back about 16 pounds a month, 31,000, you'd be paying back 27 pounds a month. So as you earn more, the repayments will go up, but they're never going to be really, really difficult to manage. Um, so just some brief tips as we sort of come towards the end of the presentation, how to make your money last, budgeting, you know, as I've tried to sort of get in a little bit at the start of the presentation is a really useful thing. Uh, you can get apps such as Money Dashboard that will allow you to budget. Also some banks now give you or banking apps that you can use that you can really keep a check on how much money you're spending. You can put your pots of money aside, you know, to try and save money on a regular basis. We'd always advise students or really anybody if possible to avoid credit cards, store cards, and, and especially payday loans with, with their huge interest rates. And um, once you're a student, as soon as you're enrolled, make sure you get yourself an NUS card and a Union Days card. And these will give you loads of huge discounts everywhere, even on things like um, shopping at groceries at some shops and chemists. And you, know, you can get really cheap cinema tickets restaurants, all sorts of things really he heavily reduced, especially with things like restaurants. If you're happy to go on a Monday, which students, you know, are often a bit more flexible about the days of the week they can go out, then you could be saving like 20, 30, 40 percent, uh, really, really good savings for just be because of your student status. And then as mentioned in the presentation, make sure you get yourself that student 18 plus Oyster card if you're studying full time, and that's going to give you that 33 percent discount of travel in London as well. So when should you apply? So you can apply as soon as application is open in 2022. Check your degree title on the service website, as I mentioned. Um, you don't need to have a firm place at SOAS. You may just have SOAS done as your first option, but your, your, your place hasn't been confirmed. You can still apply for student finance and put SOAS as your, um, your destination university. And then if you did end up going somewhere else, you could always change this later with student finance. It's quite easy to do. So if you have any queries, um, email us on advice at service.uk. And then I think this final slide is kind of a bit of a, a duplication of that. So um, yeah, please, if you have any queries, once you want to, you know, feel free to re-watch this presentation, especially if you if you need more complex details. But I hope it's been useful. Um, I hope you find this this online open day really useful as well. And we look forward to seeing you at SOAS in September. Thank you very much.